Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, is my favorite movie of last year. And despite the fact that I haven't seen Whiplash or some other Oscar nominees yet, I don't think my opinion will waver, because there are significant elements in Birdman that will stick with me for a long time. Before I get too analytical, I will give a summary. Birdman is a movie about a washed up superhero actor who's trying to reestablish himself as an artist on Broadway and the mental and emotional journey he goes on during this time in his career. It's an astonishing achievement in cinema and you should see it if you haven't, but I'm not here to review the movie. If you want to see a good review of the movie, check out this one. Otherwise, stay right here and be warned, some minor spoilers ahead. If you want to skip the spoilers, you can click right here or go to this point in the video. The literal translation of the word metaphysics is beyond reality, and in Aristotle's writings, he theorized about what was beyond our physical realm, what is beyond the physical reality which we know. Birdman has a lot of scenes that are very surreal, and although the movie mostly makes it clear when something is or is not real, we are left to ourselves to discover what these scenes of grandeur actually mean to the narrative. Are the explosions in the sky and the giant birds a piece of some kind of other reality, one which no one else can see? Perhaps. Or is Keaton's character just crazy and we're getting an idea into his demented reality? More than likely. Either way, we're getting a glimpse into a world which we would not consider real, which could be a direct application of what Aristotle wrote about in his Metaphysics. In a literary sense, metaphysical writing was primarily founded by 17th century English poets whose verse was characterized by extended metaphors comparing very dissimilar things and intellectually challenging style, but in a modern sense, a meta-narrative is just a narrative about a narrative. And Birdman's form and content work together to create a genius meta-narrative. The setting of Birdman is not only a Broadway play, but the entire movie is cheated to appear as one long continuous take. And while film and theater are not entirely dissimilar, the movie's form and content draw the two together and blur the line between film and theater, which is an achievement all of its own. On the internet, the word meta has come to mean perhaps a derived version of metaphysical, which has come to mean something completely different. And it's been popularized by characters like Abed on Community. I want to tell the story of Jesus from the perspective of a filmmaker exploring the life of Jesus. See, in the filmmaker's film, Jesus is a filmmaker trying to find God with his camera. But then the filmmaker realizes that he's actually Jesus and he's being filmed by God's camera. And it goes like that forever in both directions, like a mirror in a mirror, because all of the filmmakers are Jesus and all of their cameras are God. And the movie's called Abed. Filmmaking beyond film. A meta film. My masterpiece. In this sense, meta means something which is self-referential or self-aware, and Birdman exhibits this as well. Michael Keaton plays a washed-up superhero actor. Edward Norton plays a stubborn, hard-to-work-with performer. In fact, Emma Stone, Edward Norton, and Michael Keaton have all had significant roles in superhero films, and here they are now, acting in a movie about superhero actors. This movie pokes fun at mainstream film, but more specifically the superhero genre and its superficial nature recently. It knows exactly what it is without being too preachy. It's a movie about movies that takes place in a theater. Is this for real or are you shooting a film? A film! You people are full of crap! Maybe Birdman isn't the best example of metaphysics in cinema, and whether or not it wins any awards this season doesn't change the fact that it's my favorite movie of the year. It's been rolling around in my head ever since I saw it. And if you see it, I think you'll be thinking about it for a long, long time. Hello, I'm Morgan Freeman, and my New Year's resolution is... What do I want to do in 2015? Yo, Aaron Paul, 2015, New Year's resolution, bitch. I'm Zach Galifianakis, 2015, New Year's resolution, be in more movies.